I'll do, but... I think about what the CIA was reading in the 60s. Yeah. Let's see. How was your Okay, so here we go. Running on this stuff is not so smart. But hey, as I've been saying to everyone, I'm playing in the snow. What could be bad about that? Right. There are a lot of people waiting for the bus. That's kind of silly. Okay, so this should take a little more time than usual. I won't. Uh, take you for the entire hour. But I guess between this morning's video and a little bit I did with uh, Jose building the robot and this, yeah, it sounds so. A day in the life, <laughs> I suppose. Anyway, here we go. What's ah, on my mind? Actually, you know, the habit of Free riding and the habit of doing one of these things so frequently um, can feel like it's forced. You're like, oh no, I have to go think again. So I get it when kids feel that way. Um, but it's also interesting. Sometimes the best stuff comes when you're kind of uh, feeling like you're at your end, but you have more to say. So yeah. Oop, let me try to get across. Okay. Not bad. I can run on this stuff. I don't know, I mean, not, I don't mean this. Of course I can run on this. I mean on the snow so far it's been crunchy enough so I can push down on it. Now I have the walk sign but there's so many cars turning here and can they really see? So I have to wait and then Make eye contact, sort of. Although I never really see a big guy. I go up here, um, across the Bronx River. There's a project we're doing this year. This uh, coming up in March, actually. Um, with but they um, rocking the boat. Now, Rocky the Boat created this park, by the way. Um, so, the five ABC carpets are there, sort of over that way, down the river a little bit. And uh, so, we're going to take 10 kids from my school, 10 kids from the uh, other school in our building, Rock Arena. So, I'm working with the science teacher and myself to. Yeah, there's the river. To um, build a curriculum. Well, it's really kind of added to it. But I would like to build some curriculum around it. And he said something yesterday in our meeting with Rock in the Boat that I thought was really interesting. It had to do with kids being able to imagine what a scientist does. 
Um, so I'm collecting materials today uh, into a collection on Guru. I, uh, I thought, well, what if we found out what makes some of these kinds of tick? Uh, you know, I know the swallows work is happening up in um, Cornell. And so I <laughs> looked there and found somebody there who has been, get this, studying um, swallows since the late 80s. So, you know, you can say, how can swallows be a curriculum, right? <laughs> And it's such a good lesson in what is curriculum in some way. Because this guy, I'm oh, sorry I don't remember his name offhand, but he's been studying Wilkins, I think. He's been studying um, swallows, their um, adaptations, their how they nest, how they breed um, for since the 80s since the late 80s it's good. Ugh, let me get across oh, that guy ah! <laughs> so um yeah well, look you can think it's a uh, might be a hard thing to write a whole paper about or a post about or even to do a project on but look he's made it into an entire um profession <laughs> so so what connections is he making He's, um, he's a biologist, an evolutionary biologist. There's something knocking on me. That's better. Um, and I don't totally understand, but just reading his page on a, a wiki that is about him. It's called My Interest. He uh, basically breaks down how he does his studies, why he does his studies, what's important about them, um, and just figuring out who he is and what he studies helped me a lot to think about swallows in, and how they can bring about, how they're like a... Um, microcosm of biological systems and that's really what he's studying right so he's studying um how do they deal with the um oh i don't know uh, the environment and survive how do they continue to have the same roots, um, measuring their migratory patterns and understanding their entire life span and studying the importance of age and something called oxidative stress, um, which is something that is allowed, well, if Without that stress, cells reproduce. With the stress, they tend not to reproduce and other diseases come from it. And so, the age of the birds is reduced. Um, and I don't know what impact that has on the population. 
but it has an impact if you study um, the uh, so it branches off into global warming um, because these swallows have to eat you know, they they're as a another vocabulary word today <laughs> they're aerial um, insectivores. Um, that's the only way they eat. It's not like they could say, oh, you know what, there are no flying bugs around here today. So let me go uh, eat some off this branch. It doesn't happen. So there have to be flying bugs or flying insects for them to survive as a species. So it refers to cold spells where they get rid of the, where those flying insects disappear. That's been a problem for the swallow. Um, that's all interesting. I thought it was fascinating. Um, and given the few number of students in school today, I was able to, to mess around and learn about swallows and evolutionary biology and how it impacts on or how global warming impacts on the species um, how they study now he's got these box nests set up all over Ithaca and they, they have webcams on them and they watch and keep data through the webcams I'm wondering if we could do some webcams as well. Um, that's kind of future thing, so let's just get the boxes out there and see what happens. So, my understanding of this project, briefly, is that we're building, and that's a big part of it, actually. Um, we're spending four sessions where we're actually building the boxes from plans. And while you spend about half your time building the boxes, you spend the other half your time learning about the environment. Why they might be important or interesting to think about. So I don't know how to say how important that is for a young person. But as I was referring earlier, um, I don't know if our students, or any students, can understand how cool it is to be able to focus on tree swallows for your entire career. Now, a big part of his interest after he does, in that first couple of paragraphs he did introduce, his particular interest, he Pretty quickly started talking about how he was working with other people at Cornell. Um, other people specifically within orthonology, but then in engineering, creating apps and technology to to do this work. Um, he then described also uh, all of the deep connections he's making with so many different scientists throughout the country and then even uh, a recent project that he refers to, I don't know how recent it is, recent when he wrote it, uh, in which they're connecting with people who are studying swallows in Central America, trying to, well they're trying to do two things it seems to me. They're trying to look at the entire population and see how it works. And then there are also other scientists who are looking at um, individual species. So learning how to tag these swallows and follow them so that they look at the same species, not the same species, the same bird um, over time. It's a really interesting process. They're still in the process of developing. So, I lost track 
he must have mentioned in a couple of paragraphs 